Hey everybody, it's Jeremy, and today I want to talk about something that is a little more personal to me. I was recently asked on my Tumblr how I can call myself a believer as well as a bisexual. And for those of you who were watching this, I am both of those things. For me, it's been a, it's been a tough road, I think, um, because being like putting yourself in a box and saying, oh, I'm, I'm gay, straight, bisexual. I think to deviate from the norm by calling yourself either gay or bi or lesbian, whatever you, whatever you are, um, I think it's difficult to be able to come out and be able to say that because both communities, in a way, reject bisexuals. Um, there's this idea of open-mindedness and everybody is really accepting of each other and in, in our current day and age is, is what's going on, but I think for the street community, there's a lot of um, the really religious people who say, oh, you're lying to yourself, you're really straight, you're just curious and you're exploring. Um, and then there are the, the gay side, who religious and non-religious, who are saying, oh, well, you're just lying to yourself because you're really gay, you're really lesbian, you're not, you don't really like the, the opposite gender, you really like the same gender, you are just, you're in denial about it. So. I think there's a lot of struggle between the two of you're lying and denial or you're just silly and experimenting. And I think you get to a point in the game where you go beyond experimenting. If the feelings that I have ended in junior high and never progressed beyond high school, then I would say, yeah, it was. it's a phase. It's going to pass, you know? I mean, like, everybody experiments at some point in their life. Um, I think it's totally a natural thing to do. But I think if it goes beyond the experimentation phase and into reality and into your normal everyday living, then you have something that you can't deny and you can't say, oh, you're just, you're playing around, you know, like, it's not really right to do that. It'd be the same as telling somebody who's straight, oh, you know, you're, you don't like girls, you don't like boys, Psh, you know, it, it's the same kind of concept. So, um... And I don't want this to be a bashing of anybody, and I don't want to be pointing fingers at anybody. Um, I just want to make sure that my point is very well known. And for me, coming out has been an extremely difficult thing. I grew up in a very conservative, very religious home, very homophobic, and it put me in this state of mind of, I can't ever tell my parents. I can't ever talk to them. And that put a lot of fear in me. And I also went to a Christian school up until I was in 10th grade. So I already had a lot of fear of that I might like boys too and that I was going to go to hell. And so I had a lot of these ideas already in my head. And these just progressed on through life. And so the idea of coming out has been terrifying. And so the fact that I'm even making this video and I'm planning on putting it up is something that's beyond me. And I... I would have never thought a year ago that I'd be at this point. And my ex actually broke up with me because I came out to her. And the reason why I started coming out is because in my um, junior year at college, I was here at the, the school I'm currently at that I'm doing grad school and I, I was doing my undergrad. And um, I had a roommate who came on to me and did a few other things that were just very inappropriate. And um, I needed help from that. I needed counseling from that. And it took me about a year to get into counseling for that, just because I was in denial about it, I didn't want to deal with it, and I didn't want to have to bring it up again. So when I brought it up, there were a lot of things that were addressed. There were a lot of broken things that were brought about. And for all of my life, I considered myself a Christian. But then I just let it go somewhere. And it ceased to be important after a while. And then I got it back. And then I let it go, and then I got it back. And I think through the whole process of going to counseling, it, it helped me not only identify with who I am, but also being able to just reconnect with my faith and with God, because there were a lot of parts of me that were saying, well, if I come out and if I believe this about myself and if I say this is true, God's going to hate me, God's not going to want me, God's going to send me to hell. You know, like, there are all these ideas that I had and I realized through counseling, um, and it wasn't anything that the counselor said, it was just me venting and him reflecting back to me and saying, well, here's what I'm hearing you say. Is this how you really feel? Is this how you want to live? And I realized 
that God made me perfect. And if I want to say that these feelings that I have inside of me are wrong, that puts me in one of two positions. Either one, these feelings that I have are sinful, and by me having them and accepting them, Satan must have infiltrated my brain and possessed me, and demons are inside of me. And intrinsically that's wrong to me because I call myself a believer and I call myself a faith follower and I call myself a Christ follower. That would go against all of my faith because I would be saying that God isn't inside of me because evil spirits have gotten inside of me. And that goes against what the Bible says is that if Christ is with you, the enemy can't be. So I'm either left to say that, that I've been possessed, or two, that I have these feelings because God made me wrong and God did something that was wrong and he broke the mold. And that would also conflict with my faith because God makes us perfectly. God makes us exactly how we are. And we're supposed to be who he made us to be. So I'm left to be in one of those two positions. Or I can take the middle route and say, you know what? God made me perfect. God loves me all the same. I'm not going to pick these two doors because I'm saying that God's wrong. I'm saying that the Bible's wrong. I know that God made me exactly how I am and loves me and accepts me. So why not just embrace that? Why do I have to go into one of these two conflictual points and either deny my faith or deny myself? So that is kind of where I'm at. And I kind of roundabout talked about everything that's been on my heart and on my head since I've wanted to answer this question. Um, but I think just for me, I had to reconcile a lot with myself and with my faith. And coming out has been such a big, gigantic thing um, for me because I had this impression of what it's been. I've only told a few people. I've only told maybe like 10 people. Um, and it's been good. Overall, it's been really, really good experience. Um, I don't think I'll ever be able to tell my parents. I think there are a lot of obvious reasons for that. Um, I think that a lot of people in the church are probably not going to be able to accept me. I think that's a different conversation and I don't want to go into that in this video. But um, I know that who I am is who God wants me to be and who God made me to be. And if he wanted me any different, he would have made me that way. That's how I reconcile being both a believer and being bi. Because I realize that God loves me all the same and he accepts me just as I am. So why not just accept that? Why? put myself in a catch-21 where I have to pick myself or my faith, you know? So that just seems illogical to me. Um, and I guess just in general, I am not bothered by the question because I appreciate getting it, but it bothers me that there are people who believe that you cannot be one or the other. You know, like, you can only be gay and non-religious, you can only be bisexual and non-religious, or you're straight and religious, you know? like you can't have attraction to the same sex if you are a believer. Um, and I guess that just bothers me just because it's who I am. Um, but I think it just bothers me that there is still like that belief. And that's a different conversation for a different day, a different vlog. So I appreciate any of you guys who've watched. If you have any comments, anything to say, um, put it below. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm an open book, really. Um, you can feel free to message me in my inbox like, you know, I want to be able to be here for other people who are in the same position who are like, well, am I really a Christian if I struggle with these things, if I have these feelings, you know, like, am I really a believer? Um, and I think it's difficult and I think that's something that a lot of people are really struggling in and really don't know how to find the way out and the way back into the light because they feel so segregated because it's like you have the church that says you can't be this way and then you have the... GLB community who says, well, you can't be a believer. Um, and those are extremes. Those are not characteristics of everybody. Those are just extreme points of view. And I feel like those are the ones that are usually characterized of like this big looming church and this big looming community. And that's kind of the point that I'm wanting to make. Not that those are generalizations of those people, but those are the ones that usually get characterized as the big faces of how you're supposed to be. So I think sometimes it's hard to find that middle ground of being in support of your community and who you are and being in support of your faith and finding that middle ground. So anyway, that is the end of this video, and thank you all for watching and listening, and peace.